What's up guys, I'm Joel Dodge. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up your iRig blue board with bias effects. So guys, the first thing you want to do to set up your iRig blue board is you need to download the app. Um, I already have it downloaded and you're going to come into it right here. Um, and typically you're going to need to come in to this part right here and you just click on it. And then it's going to search for your blue board as, and make sure you have it turned on. Um, there's an on switch on the back of it. So you need to turn that on. And then when you click this, it's going to sync up with your blue board. So um, you can see that mine's connected. Just change the batteries. It's got a hundred percent battery. Um, as a side note, the battery life on this thing is great. I think this is actually the first time I've changed the batteries and I've had it for like over a year now. Um, but anyway, what I like to do in this is just make sure that stuff is working. So I'm going to click the A button. Yeah. And when you click it on the pedal, you're going to see it um, turn blue inside of the inside of the uh, this app. Um, so that's the first thing I like to do. The second thing I like to do is I have an expression pedal that I use as a volume pedal, but you have two of them. That's what these are on the sides here. And you can come in here and, um, and uh, calibrate your pedal. And I think this is something that you should definitely do every time because the last thing you want is during like a live performance that you try to turn your volume off and it doesn't go all the way off, you know? So, so you click it and the first thing it's going to say, is going to say, uh, put it to its minimum. So I'll put it to its minimum and then I press okay. Then you put it to its maximum and then you press okay again. And now it's going to be mapped, um, to minimum and maximum. Like, and what I was, you'll be able to tell that this isn't calibrated if you have like a few, like a few bars when you're at minimum or you're like not all the way up to the top when you're at maximum. So definitely do that. Um, the other thing that's, I guess, worth noting, well, for some reason, this will show as uh, 101, even though it's 104. Um, but those, those numbers can be important depending on how you map. The way I like to map is you just click the button when you have it set and it and it just maps it. So, um, anyway, but you can change the numbers on here and you can map it that way also. Anyway, I'm going to exit out of this or to go into bias effects. I'm sorry if I was like some of what I was saying didn't really make sense. Um, anyway, if you watched my last video, um, where we, we made this, uh, we made this board and I've actually uploaded it. So if you want to, download this board and use it as a template, you're more than welcome to. In that other video, I explain kind of the thought process that went into making this board. So first thing, I want to show you all how to map something. And um, we're going to map the expression pedal to this volume pedal inside of bias effects. And all you do is hold down um, on whatever you want to map. And then this pops up. Click to learn MIDI control. Uh, our MIDI CC and you click that and this little wheel comes up and then you simply press the button or move the expression pedal. So I'm going to move the expression pedal and now it's mapped to that inside of the app and you can hear that little hiss coming from my effects. So that's my guitar coming through the board. And if you turn the volume down, completely goes away and you can actually see on the input that there's input coming in and no output. So I wanted to do that first off to show you how to map something. Second, it's also, it's nice to have volume control on your foot. Um, okay. So the next thing I want to show you guys is even though you can come in here and like map it to like, see, I could hold down right here and map a button to this pedal. Um, what I actually prefer to do and the reason I'm not going to map anything else is I have it set up exactly how I want. What I like to do is actually map it to these buttons. In the live view, you can come to these buttons. And so I have it set to drive, but you could say you wanted it to control some other effects category. 
you could click any of these and it will control that category. And what it'll do is this button, say there's two drives, it's gonna to toggle between those two drives. Um, but if you're in a category where there's only one thing, so like this reverb is the only reverb, I have two delays. Um, if you click the reverb, it's gonna, it's just gonna turn that one pedal on and off. And I, I actually, this is the way I like to have it set up in a live situation. The only thing I would do differently, um, I have my delay so that I can change between a dotted eighth and a quarter note, like just like we set up in the last video. Um, but I like to actually, instead of using two different drive pedals, to just go ahead and turn this into the same pedal, but just turn up the gain on it compared to the other one. So I think we had it at three. Yeah, so this first one, we have it, the tone at three. We have the gain really low and the output kind of high. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn up the gain. We're going to turn the output down because the gain makes the output a little louder. And what you'll see, I'm going to turn the volume back up so you can hear me. And when I press the A on the blue board, it's going to toggle between these two. And... What I like about this is it gives you another gain stage without drastically tone, like changing your tonal settings. Um, so, but see how it, 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 it retains that same tone, just boosts the gain. And I, I really like that in a live situation because you don't want your guitar um, to all of a sudden have like a huge difference in the tonal characteristics, like in the middle of a set. Um, so that's how I like to map it. The last thing I'm going to show you guys is in the live view. Um, let me turn the volume down to get rid of this. Um, so the last thing I'm going to show you guys is in, in this view, you can actually map these, which are banks. So, so for example, this is, this is a bank that I use when I'm playing bass. This is a bank I made for that last video. Um, for the bias effects demo, if you've seen that. Um, and then this is the bank we've made for like that we're using in this video in the last video. So, and actually I didn't save the volume change, um, which is why you hear the, the volume, the hiss again. Anyway, I'm just gonna turn the volume down. But you can map the MIDI to these buttons also. So say you wanted to just completely change your board um, like the whole line of effects in the middle of a song are just, you have them saved for different songs in your set. You can just click those buttons. Um, so, so those are your different options as far as mapping, um, the buttons on the blue board to your effects. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll be doing another video on how to record in Cubasis through bias effects. And if you haven't seen the other video where I set up this effects board, I tried to explain as well as possible, like the logic behind how I set this board up, because this is kind of like just a, a nice bare bones board. And if you want to download this board, I have it in, in the cloud. You just look up JD YouTube and you'll find this board. So anyway, guys, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. But as always, die empty. I'll catch you in the next one.